Hello, and thank you for checking for taking the time to check out our pilot study on the feasibility and effectiveness of an interprofessional mindfulness informed group based intervention for the treatment of overactive bladder. We have no affiliations to disclose. The background for developing this study was the, the idea of how to best manage urinary urgency in women who have overactive bladder. Behavioral therapy is the first line of treatment for overactive bladder, and distraction has long been proposed and taught as the way to manage urinary urgency. However, recently there's been more of a focus on the potential utility of mindfulness for addressing urinary urgency in overactive bladder. So our primary purpose with this study was to examine the feasibility of implementing a, a novel mindfulness-informed interprofessional group-based program to address overactive bladder in women. And our secondary purpose was to look at the potential clinical utility of this program by using several different well-established outcome measures. We recruited participants from the area in and around Hillsboro, Oregon in the United States. It was a sample of convenience for this single arm, um, non-randomized pilot study. We included women who were at least 18 years of age, who spoke English and were willing to undergo screening, and who had overactive bladder based on the overactive bladder symptom score. We excluded people who had any variety of confounding factors that might uh, impact their overactive bladder symptoms or bladder sensation. We hope to get at least 10 people in our study and we decided to proceed with the study as long as we could get at least three people enrolled. So the program that we developed was developed by the three of us, two of whom are physical therapists with extensive background and training in treating women with overactive bladder and the third of whom is a psychologist with specific training in overactive bladder. So we developed a six week group based two hour session per week program focusing on mindfulness techniques related to bladder sensation and the management of urinary urgency, as well as healthy bladder habits like fluid intake, dietary management, and then finally pelvic floor muscle exercises for helping to control urgency. The outcome measures that we used were for the uh, clinical utility were the overactive bladder symptom score, the USA2, which is the University of South Australia um, urinary sensation assessment, a mindfulness questionnaire, bladder diary, and the global rating of change. And then we tracked uh, how long different components of the, the program took us to, to, to run. As far as feasibility, which was our primary outcome of interest, we did not get as many people as we wanted. We ended up with very limited recruitment time. So we ended up with an N of four people, all of whom completed the trial. So we didn't get our N, our retention rate was excellent, and we, just, we deemed as researchers that the time out that we spent on the program was feasible. As far as the clinical utility, this table shows uh, the outcome measures and some demographic information for all four of our participants. I'd like to take to pay, have you pay special attention to the two columns highlighted in green. The overactive bladder symptom score, start and finish scores are highlighted, and you'll note that three out of the four participants met the MCID for, on the overactive bladder symptom score, indicating that they had a clinically important improvement in their symptoms. And then additionally, the global rating of change score, all of the four participants noted that they were at least somewhat better, um, two were moderately better. So we felt that the clinical utility of this was promising. The strengths of our study were that we demonstrated that this novel program was feasible to run. It has potential clinical usefulness based on our outcome measures, and it provides many opportunities for future research in this area of mindfulness for overactive bladder. The weaknesses include that we had a very small sample. It was not representative of all women who have overactive bladder, and we didn't have any long-term follow-up. Our conclusions are that we found preliminary evidence for the feasibility and clinical utility of this study, and that there are multiple options for future research. Thank you very much for checking out our presentation.